recording. So that was Nathan Parker from MakerNet. So they're working on interesting stuff too. Um, once again, I want um, related to that, but they're they're about creating a platform that maker spaces use to organize their equipment and capacity. So it's a paid platform. It's reasonable, but it's a paid thing. It's got a revenue model with it. Um, and then, of course, I whined about how there's still no open source product design, but there's a little bit of work coming out. There's a group that's trying to develop standards for how you document and like do the whole thing. Uh, it's called mm -hmm. Open Open Hardware, like something information group. You can see it in my notes with Nathan. Let me just review that with you, Nathan Parker. Uh, it's called the. Um, They're working on a data model. It's called Open Know-How Working Group. So they're doing a data model for open hardware. It's kind of the perennial question of the tax taxonomy for open hardware that nobody knows how to do yet. Um, but there's a group working on that through the, they had this Internet of Manufacturing Summit by the Maker Alliance. But anyway, um, I think for now, the outcome of that is that we need to clarify like what the product is and, and get people on boards and come up with a budget for what it takes to do that and get the money for it. Um, so I think we can get the money for it, but we need to make this thing clear. So what are your thoughts on that? Um, do you think it would be worthwhile to do like a, some kind of, kind of an explainer video on that or I don't know. The, the most critical stuff is the technical like okay here's all the pieces just really clarifying that and going from there but what are your thoughts any mm -hmm. any thoughts on where, what we need to be doing right now um, well all the elements are there um, you have people who were working on uh, DIY motors uh, several approaches uh, um, um, assembling your own uh, modular batteries is it's doable. You can buy the separate uh, uh, cells. Uh, so all the elements are there. It's just like bringing everything together and in a format that works. So we could make uh, a video. Uh, it doesn't have to be like detailed models, uh, more concept drawings like blocks putting blocks together, mm -hmm. explaining what the, the, the whole concept is and uh, yeah, trying to get people aboard uh, for further development. And that's, yeah, that's how I was thinking about um, approaching the people in the Fab Lab that I'm busy in. Mm -hmm. They all have like a busy agenda. Uh, it has to be clear what they're... Um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what, what project they're gonna uh, they're gonna join? So yeah, that was that was uh, what I meant uh, in the mail. Also, it's a, it's a good text, but you have to get people to start reading it. You know, it's a uh, <laughs> so like an introductory video, short but uh, to the point. And if they're uh, enthusiastic, uh, if they're interested, they can start reading and get into further, get into the curriculum and things like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So video um, and what assets, um, what assets do we need for that? Like, do are you thinking of some animations or some things that you would produce or? Yeah. Um, that's why I was starting to look into the info infographics, uh, animated infographics, um, simple vector drawings, and then uh, animating like the arrows. First, we're gonna do that, and then we co we can do that, and you, you explain the the concept and you uh, uh, illustrate it a bit. It doesn't have to be. You can use even uh, existing pictures uh, you have enough uh, stock photos of drills and batteries and things like that we can cut out and animate it, it uh, 
it can make, make nice things without having to put too much work in it okay i think yeah yeah okay so what do we do there so maybe do um i mean the next step would be a script a tight script to yeah. make it happen right yeah um first a small scenario and then uh, look for the the footage and the, the pictures that we're going to use in the infographics and start from there mm -hmm. uh, so what uh, do you have the energy to do in that can are you are you doing like rewriting the blog post to make it make it like understandable not i mean shorter than that it has to be like two or three minutes like two minutes man right yeah 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 two minute so a two minute piece um But but maybe a bit longer. People like yeah, videos. Yeah. Um, Four or five, uh, maybe. And the footage. Um, there's some simple tricks. You don't need the video material. Uh, you can animate simple things like. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Yeah. I was trying out some stuff like uh, basic, you know, like Ken Burns effect. Hey, you take a static picture and you zoom in and you pan it a bit and you put some movement into it. Yeah. And it comes to life and you have video footage. Mm -hmm. It works. It's, uh, if you have like a static picture and it doesn't move, um, it doesn't work as well. Show um, me. So Show I did, me. I, well, <laughs> some basic tests I did with uh, Kaden Live. Uh, where did I put it? Okay. That's right, because you're going to create the open source cinema studio with the Axiom open source camera pretty soon. <laughs> well, that's a, <laughs> well, I was I was looking into the draw material that you posted on the wiki also, and it was a, a camera with a gimbal and things like that. And my idea was like a gimbal that you can attach uh, to a, hand, a handheld uh, system. So you can walk around with it and you have camera, camera stabilization. You can uh, put it on a, a cable trolley so you have a cable cam. Okay, just a model system. Doesn't that exist already? It does, yeah, that exists, but commercial. Uh, There's no open source? For, I thought it was an open source. Well, yeah, um, uh, I forgot the name, but it's already a bit dated. Oh, hmm? it's a little dated? Yeah. So you can build further on onto it. Like the electronics is a bit dated, uh, and with uh, with the new Pi Cam, uh, it's an 8 megapixel camera. You can, uh, I think it it films full HD. It's small. Uh, you can put it on a Raspberry Pi Zero, I think. So um, uh, that has a basic camera. Right. right. So yeah. take a look at my screen there. Or uh, let me do open Sam. Is that oh. what you're? No. Yeah. Open yeah, yeah. Open Sam. Yeah. That's oh. for DSLR cameras, bigger cameras. It's interesting, but uh, oh yeah, I have to. Mm -hmm. wait. The settings of my VLC I have to change. It's, okay. Well, yeah. Show me the video. So, so my next step would be. So, are you gonna write the script, or am I writing the script? Um, I, I don't know, I, uh, I can look into it, but uh, maybe you're better at uh, things like this, no? Could do that, ah, so maybe, maybe, um, maybe, maybe what, what I should do is write the script and narrate it and send that to you and you can put in some animations and stuff, you can make it, I think you could do that, or? Mm. Wait, um, I'm trying to, <laughs> I have two screens here, so now, uh, allow, okay, can you uh, see the screen? Yeah, oh there. No, now it's a, a bit slow, the movement, you can make it faster. Um, so we can take static pictures and just uh, put some some movement into it. It works. They do it a lot uh, in documentaries when they have like old pictures and 
is meant to the, the person of interest. Uh, no, basic, basic stuff. And that's using because Kaden Live has that feature there, like that yeah. kind of zoom stuff. That's yeah. uh, position and zoom. Yeah. And then something I, I really like too is uh, this one. And when you talk about certain text or websites, and then you lift out certain uh, elements that you highlight. How do you do that? And you can. Uh, well, I made. Uh, I ju just took a, a screen capture and then put it in GIMP and make two pictures. One not edited and one edited, and then you do crossfade. Ah. And it's pretty easy. It, uh, it works very fast. You did that within the Caden Live? Uh, and GIMP and then uh, combined it in Caden Live. And how did you get the zoom layer? Uh, well, also with uh, the position and, uh, and zoom. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so cool. that's, that's like simple techniques and you can make a video out of static images and yeah, it works. Mm -hmm. You can capture people's attention with it. Yeah. Yeah, Just uh, combine images and, and narrate it, and uh, then put some uh, 3D stuff into it, some uh, WebGL uh, screen captures uh, with the explosion view models, give some uh, bit of an explanation. Uh. So that way, yeah, we can produce uh, videos pretty fast, I think. Yeah. Okay, so what what should I do? So I should I should probably maybe I should probably detail the script and and, and so we can communicate the the part of the machines in there in a Steam Camp mm -hmm. to the to the world. Let's probably do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of a, uh, an overview of the of the program, like uh, day one uh, text day one. Uh, so uh, a screen capture of working with FreeCAD or uh, I don't know, whatever, some footage, mm. uh, a small explanation, day two, mm. and we go further on that. No? Okay, uh, so we can basically, um, so it's basically, an, so we're working on, a, we're working on the best steam camp in the world here, and the curriculum is like this for the first four days. Yes. And I can take a lot from the curriculum that's already written up, and I, and I can reformat it for a script. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. It's. Uh, I don't think it's that much. That much work. Okay. Well, we can uh, start uh, with uh, day one, mm -hmm. and uh, then I can try to make some uh, some video. Over it, so uh, okay. it has okay. to, to be uh, com complete. Okay. Uh, yeah, and what are your thoughts on using things like the Powtoon? Because see, I used it before, and it's there. It's really fast. They have all those kinds of effects in there. But do you know any open source variants of Powtoon? No, I've been looking for it. Uh, the only thing that. Uh, you know, crazy for uh, um, with vector drawings, you can make presentations, can make them turn, you can animate it a bit. They have an open source uh, version, uh, Sozi. But I don't know, it used to be a plugin for Inkscape and it was open source. I don't know if it's still open source. It's a standalone uh, program now. Hmm. Um, have you heard a little of it? No. Send a link. Can you send a link? Okay. It's, uh, it's useful for certain things, not everything. But I like the, the animation I wanted, uh, I made uh, to, uh, to test and demonstrate was the animated arrows. I always wanted to do that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, yeah. How did you do that? You did that with so 
Sozi? With Blender. With Blender. Uh, Blender. Okay. Yeah. You can do 2D animations with Blender too. And uh, a basic rendering, uh, open WebGL rendering, goes very fast. Okay. I haven't, I haven't worked with Sozi, but uh, it seems uh, useful. For the rest, if you want to make animations, uh, it's always uh, quite, yeah, quite a lot of work with the uh, open source programs available. There's nothing like, uh, what's the name? Powtoon. Uh, Powtoon, yeah. Yeah, I have nice results with that. Um, maybe somebody should, uh, maybe sh somebody should make a plugin for Blender to speed uh, things like that up. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> that would or or template easy. templates for uh, quick uh, arrows and, and things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. What's but the Sozi thing? Does it actually let you use it there, or what is it? Um, no, you have to install it, eh? and. Uh, I don't know how it is now, but it, there used to be some uh, issues with installing it on uh, certain systems. So, yeah, maybe we should just try it. You, you have a Linux installed, or uh, is it a live version that you're running? Installed, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah why don't you check it out? I'm not going to mess with it. I'm, I'm going to work on a script then. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and what else? What else? So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to basically price out all the development and see if I can add numbers to it for the amount of time. Um, well, I could put some work uh, a few hours this evening if we could uh, look over what what's needed for uh, for the beginning of the of the presentation. Have you still have time for that? Um, what's needed for the beginning of the presentation? So the one three D printer builds universal access, universal control. Yeah. So let's okay. Yeah. Let's take a look at that um, real quick. Um, well, we can use the explosion view model, the WebGL uh, introduction, the collaborative the design. Access. Okay. So let me do a page like. Um, I'm going to take edit and I'm going to turn that into a script. So, so I'm going to do first day. Let me share my screen here. Um, day one script. I should probably video myself. Hi, this is March, and we're working on the um, next initiative here, developing the open source microfactory Steam Camp. Right? I should probably capture my face. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or maybe I can just go into this is a quick overview. So if we jump right into it, yeah, I'll do some kind of an intro. Um, of the of the nine day open source microfactory Steam camp. Now, do you have any suggestions as opposed to Steam? Because Katarina was mentioning that, dude, this is not like for little kids. There were no there was only one little kid in your last Steam camp. Why do you call it a Steam camp? Because it's typically for students. Well, STEAM stands for uh, uh, Science, Technology, uh, Engineering, Arts, and Math. And, uh, yeah. Is that appropriate? Um, well, it's a it's a much used term, yeah. and uh, maybe it doesn't cover the the, the contents. Hmm. 
I don't know. Um, maybe just uh, the open source, open source Steam Camp. Mm. No, it's kind of the micro factory. Yeah. So first we cover how do you start and, and collaborate on an open source project. Um, we um, Shadow stock has a lot of uh, uh, license free uh, photos. And okay. Uh, okay, so let me show you another thing. Yeah. Uh, talking about open source, that uh, there's another thing. It's called. There's another open source. Uh, open source stock photos. Did you know that? Mm, no. Okay, here it is. Uh, see the link. Check out the link. And splash. Hmm. Can you share your screen again? So okay. I can follow uh, mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, um, it's on, uh, such as Hero X, where we are preparing
Yeah, I'll use the footage, uh, I'm gonna give credit to the, the photographers. That would be nice. Okay.
could you record a first piece in, uh, in Audacity? Uh, and then I can uh, make a montage of images following your voice? Yeah. Let's see, how do we do that? Um, I've got my... Oh, I even got my good... I don't know if we need Audacity. I'm going to use, use my uh, cell phone. Yeah? Because yeah. I think it might be even better. Let's see, do you think the quality, my voice quality right now is pretty decent? Uh-huh. Yeah, the... Your laptop uh, has a pretty good mic. Okay, so maybe I'll just do that. So let me, let me maybe do that. That would be... Quite cool. Yeah, I can, I can clean it up a bit in uh, in Audacity. First, uh, start talking after five seconds. Then I have five seconds uh, to make a, a noise um, image. Then you can denoise it. Okay. Oh, you probably know. But Let's see, this is a quick overview of the nine, let me, let me just read through this, of so the nine day open source microfactory steam camp. If you're a kid at heart who wants to learn to build just about anything, this is a start. First we will provide an overview of open source collaboration. How do you start and collaborate on an open source project? What is collaborative literacy and can we really develop real products openly and collaboratively? Our, our idea is that we use the Steam Camps to train people to design products using completely open source tool chains and combine that with an incentive challenges, a platform such as HeroX, where we are launching an incentive challenge to produce the world's first open source 3D printed professional cordless drill for moist plastic. Um, uh, that doesn't make sense. Where, where next year, where we will, where next year we plan to launch our first ever major incentive challenge to produce the world's first produce an open source three D printed. Professional grade, 3D printed, professional grade cordless drill from waste plastic and create a distributed enterprise, distributed enterprise around that. We want to teach people how we can produce 80% of the goods that it's possible. We want to teach people how it is possible. to produce 80% of the goods that we see on Amazon in there, but do so in an in the form of an open source distributed production version. We will cover extreme manufacturing, how you can build things rapidly with a team of people working in parallel. We will teach you how to use work logs, wikis, free cab, online collaborative docs, repositories, and how to create a roadmap, critical path, taxonomy, versioning, version history, so you can keep track of va vast amounts of product information. We found that modular breakdown is a critical element, so you can break down a project into many small bite-sized chunks. Break down a large project. many small bite-sized chunks. On day one, we introduce the Universal Access tools, 3D printer, circuit plotter, and CNC mill. We will introduce the OSC dev kit, a prototyping kit which people can use to begin an open source product development. This includes the 3-in-1 Universal Access tool, plus OSC Linux, FreeCAD, Cura, Arduino IDE, OBS Studio, Cade Live, and KiCad. Is it possible to make real pro 
make real products uh, collaboratively. Is it really possible to make um, viable products open source? Sure, open source. Let me show some examples there. Our goal is to <coughs> build the open source everything store, the open source Amazon products that you can buy or download blueprints for and begin producing in your own micro factory. Yeah, I mean, I, I could say this, but it's like, man, to do this, like, in order to do this properly, you, you really have to, like, refine it and cut it and do it, like, much more than we have now. Should we do this anyway? You want me to read this and... and so yeah, why not? Uh, it's For me, it's going to be good practice and probably okay. there's going to be uh, useful material coming out of it. We can cut it up and re-edit it later on. Huh? Okay. So I'll do, I'll just do Audacity. Audacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the guy can you send me the file. Yep. Okay. So, file. Let's see, is it recording? No, okay, here, red button. Okay. Okay, that sounds like recording red button. Let's see. Red button? Okay. Okay, that sounds like recording red button. Let's see. Okay. And then let's see, can I save this file? Save project as. You want me to file export? Mm. AIFF? No, or, I want or no, no, you want the, you want, no, you want the original project, so you want safe yeah, project. Yeah, in the upper, uh, yeah. Red button. Okay. Let me see that. Works. Red button. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It looks like it works. So let's do. Let's see. I'm gonna mute you. Muted. Okay, muted. So you're muted. I'll go at it. Okay. This is a quick overview of the 9-day open source microfactory Steam Cam. If you are a kid at heart who wants to learn to build just about anything, this is a start. First, we will provide an overview of open source collaboration. How do you start and collaborate on an open source project? What is collaborative literacy? And can we really develop real products openly and collaboratively? Our idea is that we use the Steam Camps to train people to design products using completely open source tool chains and to combine with the incentive challenges such as HeroX, where next year we plan to launch the first ever major incentive challenge to produce an open source 3D printed professional grade cordless drill from waste plastic and create a distributed enterprise around that. We want to teach people how it is possible to produce 80% of the goods that we see on Amazon, but do so in a form of open source distributed production version. We will cover extreme manufacturing, how you can build things rapidly with a team of people working in parallel. We will teach you how to use work logs, wikis, freecad, online collaborative docs, repositories, 
and how to create a roadmap, critical path, taxonomy, versioning, version history, so you can keep track of vast amounts of product information. We found that modular breakdown is a critical element so you can break down large complex projects into small bite-sized chunks. On day one, we introduced the universal access tools, which is the 3D printer, circuit plotter, and CNC mill. We will introduce the OSE Dev Kit, a prototyping kit which people can use to begin an open source product development. This includes the 3-in-1 Universal Access Tool, plus OSE Linux, FreeCAD, Cura, Arduino ID, OBS Studio, Caden Live, and KiCad. But is it really possible to make viable products open source? Sure. Our goal is to build the Open Source Everything Store, the Open Source Amazon, products that you can buy or download blueprints for and begin producing in your own micro factory. Design starts with CAD and we will teach you the basic FreeCAD workflow for design in 45 minutes. Then we will show you how to embed your 3D models using WebGL into any website. This is how we upload part libraries to the wiki. Okay, so I'll just save that as day one beginning desktop properties. It's only nine what? Nine point eight K? Hold on a second. Oh, let me unmute you. Hey, can you unmute yourself there? Because I'm not sure I can do that. Can you hear me? Yeah, got it. Well, let's see. I, I'm looking at this project. How come it's... Oh, okay. There's the data. Okay. Let's see. How big is that? Properties. Wow, it's 60 meg. Hmm. That's big. Holy cow. Um, well, how'd I send it over? Um, if you compress see. it, the... Let's see. Let's see if it compresses any. Thirty-one meg. That's okay. Let's see if I can send it over on Gmail. Thirty-one. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna work. I think it's fifty for Gmail, isn't it? Oh, could be. Uh, it used to be ten, but I don't know how much it is now. Let's see. Oh, it's sent as a Google Drive link. Okay, send it. Okay, see if you got it. Mm, not yet. My log has been changed. That, that email I got, but... Oh, okay, yeah. Mm 
Okie dokie. Yeah, you got it? Yeah. I'm gonna open it up. Okay. Okay. So, good yeah. for now? Yeah. Okay, yeah, see what so you can do with it. Mm -hmm. what, did, what did you say? Yeah, see, see what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I will uh, start working on it. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds good. I'll, I'll work on a budget to get all these pieces developed and really finding people um yeah yeah finding people uh, we got to fill, fill in the missing gaps uh what are your thoughts on okay so if you were to if you do the so you're working on some of the supposed to do the electric motor is your name on it yeah i was i was drawing uh it for the moment in freecat uh, the images are a bit unclear uh in the pdf and um uh, I'm making a 3D model for the moment in uh, uh, FreeCAD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we can, yeah, we can, I can, I was uh, going to laser cut all the parts. Out of what? Uh, out of wood? Out of wood, yeah. Or uh, maybe out of um, uh, Plexi. I have several possibilities. Or 3D printed. Um, I'm going to try several, uh, several things. And maybe scale it down. I was thinking uh, first make the model like it's described, and then scaling it down with the uh, smaller magnets and smaller coils, and stacking them. Uh, yeah, don't for, worry about uh, stacking yet. But yeah, um, but if if you make them smaller, can we? I mean, it's so it's going to be so tiny. Why don't we just reduce the number of magnets? Just make it like. Four as a basic, like you think it will work with like four, six? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you want to be careful about how much, you know, like if you make the coil so small, it's going to be super tiny. Um, yeah, yeah, I have a point. But coil. okay, but if you think about this, uh, since you know, how, ma how many motors have you built? You haven't built any motors, right? No, right, no, so it's like experimental, good. and we can, yeah, but uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the uh, if the design is sound, uh, I'm gonna follow the design to begin with. Mm -hmm. Then um, the uh, the circuit boards uh, put it in KiCad, mm -hmm. um, and that's like a good start for basic motor, I suppose. Could be, could be. Do you know how to do enough in KiCad? Uh, I've been looking into it a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Follow some tutorials. Uh, I was more busy with the DVD exports from KiCad to Blender and then cleaning the, uh, them up and things like that for a uh, uh, web geo visualization. Uh, also installed the plugin for FreeCAD, looked into it a bit, uh, but just the basics for the moment. Okay. Um, but the, the, the electronics of the motor is very basic, so yeah. it's, a, it's a good thing to start with. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good. Um, can you pump that on your logs? So in case, I mean, we'll see, um, how much time do you have to actually work on it right now? And let's see if we can, I don't know, maybe get more time for you. Like how much time do you have that you can do? Well, quite, quite a bit. Paid? Now the, the next few weeks I could work on it, uh, full time. Hmm. Um, I'm going to be a bit. Uh, busy in the in the fab lab also but that's just like maybe a half a day one day in the week but uh yeah for the moment i can put quite a lot of uh, work into the project what's the breakthrough that you got you said about webgl well it was uh, the 3d models that come out of kicat are uh, pretty big they're um the it's not the optimal, uh, op 
<laughs> optimized uh, the, the 3D model. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of um, unnecessary vertices. Uh, every um, every face has a, a, a color. So if you load a basic model, there's like 400 colors. Mm. But it also shows up into the, the code. So I was um, writing a script to clean it up. If there are similar colors, it makes one color out of it and cleans up the rest and reduces the file size. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, I'm not completely there yet, but uh, I'm getting close. Mm -hmm. And then, then uh, we can use the KiCad models very easily in the WebGL. And it's, it presents very nice. A KiCad of circuits? Uh, what? KiCad of circuits, because KiCad is only circuits, right? You're not talking about yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's only the circuits, eh? yeah. so uh, then you can um, yeah. yeah visualize the the electronics of uh, yeah. like the universal controller yeah uh, nicely visualized in WebGL. But what about um, like you know like if the web the universal controller has the you know the three D printed part like can you put that into into KiCad too? Mm, the the 3D printed part no, but you can assemble uh, the things in uh, in FreeCAD. That's that's a nice part of it. You can uh, uh, import like a total board into FreeCAD and then make an enclosure in FreeCAD. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, you don't have to measure the electronics. You yeah. just import them into FreeCAD and then uh, it is... Uh, but it how do you get them out of FreeCAD? It has, in KiCAD, it has libraries there? Yeah, it has uh, libraries of a lot of components and then you have a, a site um, that's also free, but you have to register uh, with like thousands and thousands of uh, different components you can use. Okay. And you, can, you can... in KiCAD. Mm -hmm. What about, like, for sure. example, the LCD screen and the uh, solid state relay? Um, the solid state relay, I don't know, maybe. Or even uh, the LCI like, uh, outlet. But the, the LCD screen, I think I, uh, um, I saw it. Uh, yeah. It's one of the components you can download. Most of the open source electronics, a lot of it, uh, you can you have um, KiCad models for it. But then, if you do KiCad, does it export in in step files or is it is it mesh files? It's a uh, WRL files. That's like virtual reality um, markup language. Uh, is it editable? It's editable within FreeCAD, or it's hard to edit. Uh, well. The, the problem is, if you import it in FreeCAD and then you export it again um, as a, an object file, it doesn't take the, the correct color information. If you export from KiCAD in a WRL format and you import it directly into Blender, then it saves the color information. So, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, I have to combine certain workflows. If uh, if I if I make an ex uh, an, in uh, an enclosure, um, so I import like a board into FreeCAD. You, you can make uh, design an enclosure. Then you export only the enclosure, bring it into Blender and the the electronics. You export directly from KiCad to Blender, and then then you can combine them. Then you have visually the best results. It's a bit uh, of a workaround, but uh, it works. Mm -hmm. yeah, FreeCAD is, is a good uh, engineering program, but uh, it's not really made for uh, visualization. Um, like uh, Exporting the colors is a bit tricky. One object can only have one color. Um, so the colors you... Um, um, when you click an object uh, and you go to appearance and um, and free cat, 
that's the core that's gonna get exported into uh, the obg file but when you go to set color then you can uh, select one plane eh, and give that plane of an object a certain color he, he's not going to export that so yeah it's not uh, optimized mm. but uh, yeah it's, no it's only in, in freecat uh, 0 0.17 that the obg files are uh, have an mtl file that's a material file that it, uh, before 17 he didn't export that so he didn't have any color information mm -hmm. now now we do okay yeah uh, so you said yeah for the next couple of weeks you can work on this what happens after that what do you have to do is it uh other work what, what other work are you doing well uh, it's a uh, this uh, it's a bit uncertain maybe there's still renovations in the house that I left, and maybe uh, contractors gonna take over, but that's not sure. It's, uh, maybe we can get a budget for contractors. Uh, if not so, then I have to finish it myself and I have to put some work in that too. Um, mm -hmm. But then still, I could combine them and um, do part time. Yeah like uh, yeah. work maybe five six hours on the house and then uh, another three four hours on a uh, open source ecology yeah how fast do you think you can get to actually making that the motor uh pretty fast i hope um uh, i'm gonna model but maybe I'm first. I'm gonna finish the parts so I, I can laser cut them the next time I'm in the in the fab lab, and then uh, I have all the the parts. I'm gonna order the the magnets. Uh, look into how to to make the the coils, uh, make the um, uh, how you call it uh, the pieces to help making the coils. Uh, the jigs, yeah. Yeah, the jigs. Uh, so yeah, I hope I will have a working model in the next two weeks and that's combined with the other things I want to do like working on the video and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. That and would be nice. Huh? Yeah. What about, um, you know how he said to tie them around, tie the magnets around with that thread, the tape, the whatever carbon fiber? What do you think of that? Um, the, um, cover the complete um, stator plates with uh, with uh, um, uh, not car carbon fiber with uh, glass fiber with epoxy and glass fiber I think for it was no oh I thought he, yeah 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 is that your plan well, that's uh, how it's described in the in the manual. I think mm -hmm. it's not a uh, carbon fiber, but a uh, glass fiber uh, epoxy reinforced with glass fiber. Right. Or polyester. I uh, have to look into it. Oh, but what about no? Like where the but magnets? It's, it's cheap. Uh, hmm? Yeah. What? Okay. No, that's right. And that's for is that for reinforcement or for magnetic? so that it's it's for re reinforcement uh, i think to keep the the magnets in place and things like that but that's the stator that's the stator part yeah that's the stator which part. doesn't move but the other part is where you need to yeah he's putting this reinforce the magnets with carbon fiber to hold the magnets from coming loose due to the excessive centrifugal force did you see that part yeah, um, he makes like a ring around uh, the magnets yeah. also yeah. Uh, as a, an extra reinforcement uh, because else, but that's uh, on the rotor, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the stator is with the coils that's covered with, uh, um, with the glass fiber uh, or yeah, epoxy with epoxy. Right. Um, uh, and so then the stator. 
So were you gonna do the basically the flat disc of metal? Because what if we can cut out? Um, do you have any means to cut to make the plate where you actually cut out spaces for the, or like make a retaining ring like after you put the. Yeah, what I mean, what I would do is I would modify it a little bit, so maybe space the magnets out a little more, and then mm -hmm. cut out a piece of thing that holds the magnets, uh, so they don't fly out, like a holder, a little holder thing. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Um, uh, cut something that goes around it, yeah. glue it together, so it looks a, a bit tighter and. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm looking into the the design and trying to to simplify certain yeah, uh, simpl certain things. Yeah, yeah. Can you like post that stuff? So you're working that in FreeCAD. Like, can you start a doc on that so we can maybe collaborate on that? So okay, everyone knows what's going on there. Cause yeah, mm -hmm. maybe we have some ideas. Um. Yeah. Yeah, man, First, I'm going to make a 3D model, a 3D model of what is uh, in the in the document, and then uh, we can start uh, s trying to simplify it. And yeah, okay. Um, does that make sense, or is that wasted work? Like, can you do? Is it possible to do it parametrically so we can change things? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, okay. I'm going to do it parametrically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's see how it works. With a with an array, polar arrays. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. good. That's good. Okay. Okay. Uh, I know what to do. <laughs> okay. Sure, sure. Sounds good. Sounds good. Were you gonna cut out like the the slits? Like, what are you think? Because that's like a lot of work to to cut out all those slits and move them out like that. Do you have any thoughts on that part? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe do, do, yeah. do something like a 3D printed piece, like a fan, 3D printed fan piece, so you just leave those holes, and then let's just put on another like 3D printed piece or something like that, because, man, that's, like, if you have to do that, that's not really replicable, you know? No, no, I know, I know, I've, uh, I've been thinking about how we could uh, simplify that part. Put but, a blade on the back, uh, and that's what that's what motors do. Put, just put a separate fan blade, and and here's yeah. how about this? Can you make? I don't like that tiny little shaft he's got. Can you put on like a what? What's he got? Uh, three eighths, like eight millimeter. Do twelve at least, man. What's he got for the shaft? God damn it! I didn't um, like that, that little tiny little shaft. We don't work with tiny shafts. We work with two inch shafts. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but it, uh, he uses like a standard um, bearings, like they they use in roller skates. They're easily uh, available and uh, and very cheap. Yeah. Um, well, but then you can still get like a little bigger and still. Okay, what is that? Six or eight? What is it? Eight millimeter? Mm, I'm looking. I don't know. Where's this damn BOM here? Okay, the magnets are 12. Are they? I forget. Um, I'm Let's looking take into it. Sorry. I don't know it. Well. No, because I, mean, I can tell you with a tiny shaft like that, you're just going to have a pain in the ass doing this, even the set screws. And they're going to come loose and it's not going to work. And shit. I, the it's a, it's an, eight millimeter, an 8 millimeter shaft. Uh, eight uh, millimeter. If I, uh, mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Where's the BOM? Wow. Where's that uh, yeah, it, it was in the text. I, I found it now. Um, um, it was about um, nuts, uh, adapting nuts. And, uh, um, wait, um, 80, uh, 52, 52. It's a eight, uh, M eight nuts drilled out eight, uh, with an eight millimeter drill. Hmm. So that's that's for the shaft, I suppose. Uh, Can you do a little bigger? Let's make it a little bigger. Mm -hmm. 
Because remember, yeah. we're going to put a bunch of bunch of these together, so we want to start scalable. Like, I would mm -hmm. say, start with a half inch or twelve millimeter. Um, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say start with. Yeah, yeah. Do that. Um, because mm -hmm. that, I mean, that's a usable shaft if you have a like a little bigger of a motor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's place enough. Uh, there can be a bigger bearing that uh, that isn't the problem. There's place enough in in the middle of the the stager. So. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's do that. But yeah, okay. we can get into that. Yeah, um, if we could stack them, like uh, if yeah. that's a 500 watt motor, it's pretty yeah. flat, and then stack a few. Yeah, man. <laughs> You have some powerful stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's readily going into the uh, like electric motor, electric car motor, electric vehicles, and stuff. Mm -hmm. But make it try to see like, yeah, keep the same diameter, but let's put less magnets. Now, if you put less magnets, it does not necessarily mean that it's less efficient, right? Because you'll just turn those magnets on only. For or the coils on only for a shorter time we can do that right well it will have um the amount of coils is um in comparison with the with the power uh, you can get out of it eh? less less coils less magnets is less power I it suppose. is it is that's, that's correct yeah but the thing is if we do this See, because if we're trying to do this 3D printed, because that's the promise for the, the camp, that we're actually 3D printing those things, mm -hmm. then it's going to get hot. E it's yes, probably, yes, probably yes, get yes, hot yes. Unless, unless we're running less power. So we need to dissipate that power. If it's 50, 500 watts... Well, it's this one is wood. If it's that hot, it would um, wouldn't it burn? No, uh, yeah, the, the well, burning temperature is much higher than the melting temperature of plastic. Of yeah, because the plastic gets soft, right? So, yeah, yeah, but we yeah, can, yeah. like, I am trying to go for the high temperature plastics too, like PE, like the peak PEEK. -E um, so I'm, I'm working on an enclosure version of the printer. So I'm hoping to have that pretty soon. Uh, trying to get that into the budget here. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And what's the melting temperature of a... Uh, let's see, peak. P let's see, let's look at that. What plastic was that you said? Peak, P-E-E-K. Oh, But that's, you can't print that with any shitty printer, you have to have a full enclosure mm. like I'm talking 120 C enclosure which mm. is what we can do whoa 600 F oh now we're talking uh, how much Celsius is that? Three. <laughs> oh it's 343 Celsius melting point That's, oh yeah. but glass transition is uh, 143 C Let's see, glass, glass transition of ABS. One hundred five. Yeah, how about, how about polycarbonate? It's never gonna get that hot. Uh, whatever motor it is. Ooh, polycarbonate has a glass transition of one hundred forty-seven C. One hundred forty-seven. Okay, that would probably yeah. work. That that could work yeah. for a decent motor, but I gotta get this print. So I'm thinking of. Okay, take a look at this real quick. Um, let's see. Are you still? Am I still sharing screen? So here, take a look at it. Let me share my screen. Still. Yeah, so maybe it's just an idea, but uh, a little CNC machine only um, to to uh, um, drill holes in a in a power configuration. To make motors, yeah, 
Yeah. Like one one turning shaft and one drilling. Uh, yeah, that <laughs> might be interesting. It would be nice too. It would be uh, maybe next next camp. Maybe, maybe not right now. Uh -huh. um, but check this out. Yeah, first make a, f a few prototypes, eh? but uh, it would be nice for uh, motor fabrication. So take a look at this. The, this. This red shield is attached to the bottom of the carriage and it moves back and forth. And this is around the heat. So you make this smaller heated chamber. So in there it's like as hot as you want it because everything is outside of it. So you see this red is attached to the bottom mm -hmm. of the carriage and it moves with the carriage. So it just slides back and forth. On top of okay, this uh, 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 uh. okay, and that's been done before, no. or uh, is it a concept? Uh, no, that's we haven't done it, but it's it's uh, this is the way to go, man. This is going to be it. This is a super easy way to do it. Nobody's doing it. Um, mm -hmm. We got to do it by just letting you know that's mm -hmm. that's how we could print with uh, like say polycarbonate and do re replicable printing because i don't think we could print polycarbonate in just a regular enclosure that i don't think it would work it's too mm -hmm. it will warp too much so but we got to get to the full chamber full hot chamber yeah yeah um okay so let's let's finish here good stuff and um see what we can do All right. Anything else? Okay. Okay. No. No. Uh, I will keep you updated. Uh, yeah. Publish. You know. Try to publish your publish your freak out as soon as you got it, man. Put on your log. And yeah. Yeah. Can you keep your hours there? Because you're not logging any hours there. No. No. But uh, what I've been doing is like uh, studying on certain things and then uh, trying out stuff, and it's not like really only working on it. So then. Uh, but yeah. you did do this yeah. stuff like this stuff here, so log those yeah. hours. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. 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 Uh, good stuff. So yeah, we'll we'll talk soon. Well, let's let's see if we can run this son of a bitch like early 2020, man. Like January, February, get the first event. Yeah. So I'll see what I can do. That would be nice. Get some money for so, it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, awesome. thanks a lot. See you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, See you later. Bye-bye.